Good morning. Thank you for joining us in our morning worship. This is Sunday, July the 4th. I know we are not in service on the 4th of July, but I'm grateful and I believe that uh, God still has a word of freedom and liberty for us. Um, there are so many people who have said different things in regards to um, the 4th of July. And as of this year, this was the first year in the United States that as African Americans, we were able to celebrate Juneteenth. Amen. Now that, that is worthy of prayer. Now, uh, there, we, God, I don't believe, it is about controversy. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we are free, and, and Paul says that uh, there's a lot of freedom that we have. And uh, he says, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. So we have to make sure that we try the Spirit by the Spirit to see if it is of God. Brothers and sisters, whether or not you celebrate the 4th of July, or whether or not you celebrate Juneteenth, I want you all to know that we are all in bondage. We are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And if the spirit of the Lord gives us liberty, then the spirit of Satan puts us in bondage. So we have to be careful that we are not trying to, to, to dictate who should celebrate which holiday. Because when it's all said and done, even with that, you are going to hear today that all of us have to serve somebody. We are slave to either God or we are slave to Satan. But there is different freedoms, and there is a much greater freedom in Jesus Christ. So regardless of what day you celebrate, and there are some people who are going to say, Pastor, I don't think you should be talking about this, that, and the other. Let me say this. I fought for these United States. I, I, I gave the greater portion of my adult life in service. One thing I learned in service is that you may not like what the other people are doing, but you fought for their freedom to have their own opinion. I am tired of people in our United States saying, well, our football players, our basketball players, our kids should not be kneeling during the national anthem. We fought for them to stand. No, we fought for them to have the right to stand. And we also fought for them to have the right to kneel. According to our Constitution, and we need to stop trying to put our rights on other people. When I was in school, we had uh, uh, civics classes. And in our civics classes, we learned that you have the right to do just about anything until your rights impede on the rights of others. What do I mean by that? The, the, the example that they gave us is that we have the freedom of speech. But you cannot go into a crowded restaurant or theater and yell fire. Because people jump up, they run out, they trample over each other. You can be brought up on charges because you have incited mayhem. So even though you have the right to speak, don't mean that you ought to all the time. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us a wise man will hold his thoughts while the fool just talks all the time. Every now and then, it's good to just close your mouth. We have a whole lot of evangelical Christians, and they say all evangelical Christians are white, but no, you, you got some, some black evangelical. As a matter of fact, if you are a Christian, you ought to be evangelizing. There is no such thing or shouldn't be a silent Christian. Our job is to spread the word. According to Matthew 28, he said, go ye into all the world and tell everybody what I've done and what I've taught you and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of all ages. So we're just grateful to have this liberty. And, I, and, and we just celebrated a little bit over a month ago, Memorial Day, and we talked about those soldiers, sailors, airmen, who gave their life so that we could have freedom. So what I want to say to you all, brothers and sisters, is whether you are a Christian or whether you are secular, your freedom wasn't free. That freedom cost you. 
It cost us. It, it, it cost the men and women in the armed forces. And it cost Jesus Christ his life for us to have the abundant life and freedom that we have on today. So I'm grateful. Let us put our hands together for our service. For those who are watching, who are looking for a place, yes, we are open. We are social distance. You are able to come. We have uh, six feet front to back, side to side. And uh, for those who are here, just in case, if you want to have your own personal bottle of hand sanitizer, we have bottles of hand sanitizer that you don't have. Um, uh, mask. We have masks for you. We we're grateful to our friend Dr. Sam Page and uh, to Mount Beulah, Reverend Dr. E.G. Shields, who have put together all of these different packages where they have given us hundreds of bottles of hand sanitizers and masks and everything else. So uh, we have done everything that we can to make sure that the building remains sanitized. Uh, so let us not use the excuse that we can't go to church because there's no hand sanitizer. I seen a whole lot of people at the grocery store yesterday. I seen them at Home Depot. I seen them in uh, uh, White Castles. I saw them at, uh, uh, what's the state place? Uh, well, yeah, state shape. But I mean, everybody is everywhere. Some are masked and some are not. But I'm not going to let, I'm not going to go to Golden Corral and then say I can't come to church. Something's wrong with that. If I believe God to keep me safe in the mall and to keep me safe in the restaurants, then surely I believe he'll keep us safe in the church. Amen. Now, we're, we're, I just, since I said that, I have to use a disclaimer. If you are sick and you are not feeling well, stay home. You, use your senses, pray and ask God for whatever you should do. If we do Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding, uh, and God will acknowledge or, or will direct you in all your ways, then you will never go wrong. Yeah. You will stay home when he tells you to stay home. You will go out when he says go out. Amen? Yeah. So let us just trust God. We're going to go ahead and get our services started. We're going to call our praise team up. Uh, you all continue to pray for Bishop and Mother Adams. I'll give you that testimony in just a little bit as we do our meet and greet. Uh, but just want to let you all know what's happening. If our praise team will come up, we're going to have a song. And then after that, I'll give you a scripture. Right after the scripture, uh, Deacon Johnson will come up and give us a prayer. Amen? All right.
Amen. Jesus brought me out. How many of you all know that is how we are free? It's Jesus who did it. I'm grateful for the armed services, but the armed services didn't give me the freedom that I have today. And I'm not taking away from what they did. But with Jesus, all things are possible. So we just thank God for what he's done. I want to turn our attentions for our scripture reading to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, and we're going to start at verse 31, and we are going to read down to verse 36. John chapter 8, starting at verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples, indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you Ye shall be free indeed. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his holy word. Amen. 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 Deacon, we're going to ask if you will to take us before the throne of grace. Let him look on, let him shut in, you know, let him know. 
we got halfway home, we got an email that their flight had been canceled. Now we're trying to figure out, oh Lord, what are we going to do? Do we need to turn around and go back and get them or, or whatever? But God saw fit. I'm grateful that they didn't spend the whole day in the airport to realize that their flight was going to be canceled. But how many of you all know that God still sees and knows all? And he's in control. So even though we thought it was just good for them to go and, and be comfortable and hang out in somebody's home, God already knew that the flight was going to be canceled and had it set up not only for them to have a place to just hang out, but they also were able to accommodate them, take care of them, host them for the night, and, and get them to the airport the next day. So they called us and said they made it to the airport, and they called us and sent us a message that they had made it safely to Denver. I want you all to please keep my family in prayer. Uh, as I mentioned about a week or so ago, my, my young cousin was working underneath his car, and the jacket gave way. We are going to, to have this final resting on this week in Denver. Uh, so we'll be leaving Monday morning early to get to Denver. There will be no Bible study Tuesday morning or Tuesday evening. Tuesday evening will be the viewing, and then the funeral services will be on Wednesday. We have to go and, and somehow try and convince our family. So, brothers and sisters, <coughs> it ain't just you who we need to tell that all things work together for the good. Well, there are members in our family who love God and call according to his purpose, but they are hurting. And they are asking the question of God, why? And we have to go and convince them that I am convinced that neither life nor death, nor principalities, nor rulers of darkness, nothing will separate us from the love of God. So we are going and, and, and we are going to proclaim that God is still God. And even though we are early right now, we know that God has a plan and a purpose and that there is not a single hurt that you will ever experience that God will allow to go to waste. God will use your burdens to bless somebody, even if it's blessing you. Amen. So good morning to, to all of my family who's in Denver, Colorado, who's watching with us. Uh, to our member, Mr. David Fisher in South Carolina. He's watching and 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 to our own sister Tammy Renee, who is worshiping uh, with us. And this afternoon, uh, I will be one of the guest co-hosts uh, on her show on WGNU. That is FM 106.9. So uh, I will be the, the, the special guest co-host with her, and, and we are going to, to give a presentation to her for her show. So uh, listen, we just say God is in control. Amen. So good morning. God bless you. Thank you all for worshiping with us. Uh, so good to have you. I called my auntie on yesterday. She said, hey, Super Bookers. I said, hey, auntie. She said, how can I help you? I said, well, I really didn't know. You know, every now and then, it's just good to call somebody and say, I love you. Because you never know when it's going. Brothers and sisters, don't look at everybody with gray hair and thinking that they're the ones who need it. There has been, I've seen a whole lot of black-haired people in cash. No gray at all. The young, the, the young two-year-old baby who was just eulogized on last week from the hit and run. Brothers and sisters, when I seen that casket that was no longer than this, my heart broke. We need to, to, to love every day. And some of you all, let me, I, man, I, I know I'm on my soapbox, but that's okay, I'm in back, I'm just holding the talk. I know we got some issues with people. I know we done had some falling out. But let me ask you this question. Right after your argument, if that individual died, how much would you care? Yeah, y'all yeah, just hollered, y'all just fussed, some of y'all cussed, but when it was all done, if they died the very next day, would it matter? Well, if you say no, it don't matter, then don't let it matter. Let that stuff go. My buddy who was, who was not saved at all, he told me when
when, when, when I first got to my first duty station, he said, Alonzo, I live by two rules. I said, okay, what's the rule? He said, rule number one, don't sweat the small stuff. He didn't say stuff, but we just, we made it PG for you. I said, okay, don't sweat the small stuff. What's rule number two? He said, everything is small stuff. Live, somebody wrote an old country song and they say sing like nobody's listening. Dance like nobody's watching. And love like there's going to be no tomorrow. Tomorrow is coming, but it don't mean you're going to be included. They say tomorrow's not promised. God promised eternity. It just don't mean it's going to include you on this earth. And there is an eternity afterwards. There is life after death. Where are you going to spend your eternity? Are you going to try to be comfortable and do everything that you want to do and do it all, you know, uh, to your satisfaction here on earth? Because even if you live a hundred years, do you know how small a hundred years compared to eternity? I advise you to live right now. Let's just say, because I know there are some people who don't believe. There are, there are some true believers, but then there are some people like me who saved and sanctified and wondered, well, Lord, what if that ain't true? Is there anybody besides me who loved the Lord but still wondered, hmm, maybe there is no God. Maybe we all just here. But if you go to the boat and you gamble, you need to know the odds. Let's just say God is real and Satan is real. There's a heaven and there's a hell. Are you going to gamble your 80, 90, 100 years on earth compared to eternity afterwards? If you were to bet them odds, go right ahead. Those are the same people who like friend or not. I ain't dissing nobody in the lobby. I'm just saying that the, the chances of you winning is slim to live. Yeah. But we still play. If you want to play the odds of thinking that God ain't real, go right ahead. But one of these days, you're going to find out tomorrow. Yeah. My granny said, baby, uh, ball sense is better than top sense. <laughs> you don't believe that, me agree. See, that's some of them saying some folks don't understand and they ain't never heard of. But I'm, I'm dealing with people, I'm talking to some folks today who, who had some of that old time religion. Who had that granny who said, okay, if you don't believe that stove pot, I'm going to leave it on. And I'm going to walk out the room. Fifteen minutes later, ah! he found out. He won't do it again. All right. Now is the time for ties and offer. We're going to do our ties and offer right now. Uh, we have a few ways to give. Ever since this pandemic started, there have been people who are asking, Pastor, I can't come to church, but I want to give. Is there any way I can give electronically? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can give via our cash app. The cash app is dollar sign New Jerusalem 1977. You should be able to see it up on the screen. Also, for those who want to use the Zelle app, Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, you can use it. And the fastest way to get to it is just put in the phone number that's, that's associated with the church. That is 314-368-7378. Or if you like me and still like to use checks and those old stamps, you can put it in the mail. And we thank God for a mail service who will still deliver anything from this side of the United States to the other side, but just didn't sit. I wish I could put a stamp on my forehead and just jump in the mailbox and get anywhere I want to go. But it cost me $400 just one way to get on a plane. If I could survive in a box, I would put myself in a box and UPS myself to Vegas. Amen. Yes, I, I, I love Vegas. It's a beautiful place. Uh, it don't have to be sin city. Wherever you go, take God with you. But if you want to put it in the mail and send it to New Jerusalem, you can send it to New Jerusalem, number one North Day, Ferguson, Missouri, 63135. Please do not put cash. We have to say this uh, because there are some folks who don't believe in checks and, and all your money is in your mattress. That's going to be a bad day if you ever catch fire. And it's going to be bad for your family who's going to be real mad at you, not only that you're gone, but that you burned up all their money. 
Take your money off the mattress, folks. Put it into the bank. It is federally insured, and no Uncle Sam is not tracking you by your $15. Alright, I'm done. Let's bless, bless the offer. Father God, we thank you for those who gave. Uh, we thank you for those who had desire to give, but don't know the scripture that said that you would be seed to the sower and bread to the ear. Uh, so we pray that as they have purpose in their heart, that they have given, they have given out of their necessity, that you would bless them some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Brothers and sisters, we are going to, to ask our choir uh, to come and give us a, a, a brief selection. Uh, as we are talking about liberty, I, um, I asked them, or it was kind of brought, that they could sing a song called Abundant Life. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. So as we're talking about freedom and liberty, we want you to live, but we want you to live in the abundant life. Man, I wish I had time to talk to you about living an abundant life. But some churches don't want to talk about finances, and some preachers don't even want to talk about finances if they're trying to get it from you. I'm not trying to get money from you. I'm trying to get it to you. I believe, according to God's word, that there should be no such thing as a broke Christian. All right. All right. In these United States, I don't think there should be a thing as a homeless veteran. Our men and women who served for this country and gave their lives, their liberty, their time. Do you know that the liberty that, that, the, that the men and women fight for when they are in uniform, they don't get to exercise? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that I can wear the uniform, but I can't wear my uniform in a men parade without approval? I cannot go to a movie that is politically charged in uniform. I can't speak as a service member because I'm no longer bound by the Constitution. I'm bound by the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So the things that we fight for, when we are in uniform, we don't really get to experience. But as a Christian, there is no reason that your father, who is king of kings and lord of lords, who owns the earth and, and the fullness thereof and all the money, baby, listen, I thank God for a good job. Amen. I'm making money. And my daddy says, son, I make money. Money don't make me. I'm making money, but my kids, they look like I'm making money. Hello. My wife said, the biggest problem I have is when I walk through the mall and there's a woman walking with her hair done, her nails did, and her kids got nappy hair and snotty nose and, 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 and look like they just came out of the door. There's something wrong with a parent who ain't taking care of their kid. Take care of your kids first. Yeah. Amen? Hello? But if my father is king of kings and lords of lords, then I, I should look like the son of a king. All right. All right. All right. I'm done again. <laughs> so about Right. So uh, we're going to bring our choir back to you after the choir. We're going to have a, a quick word for as quick as I can make it from the Lord. <laughs> Y'all go to the movies and sit there for four hours and watch the Titanic. You can sit for four hours with me too. <laughs> <laughs>
a priest to have joy. Matter of fact, let me ask this question. Do y'all know what joy is? Joy is when God gives you like a peace in the midst of your circumstances. Despite of what you're going through, God has given you joy. It would have hit us on the side. 
He went through the gate of the back uh, of our neighbor, went through a brick wall, and the median went through that and hit the house next to us. Brothers and sisters, all I could say was two to three seconds, and it could have been a funeral for the both of us. Satan is trying to kill you. Do you know that we are in warfare? Do you know that every day, if, if, if we are in a spiritual battle, what is the purpose of the battle? To win on your side. And what happens in war? There are casualties of war. Now, General MacArthur, one of the great generals of the U.S. Army and United States history, when we serve our country, many of us say we are willing to die for our country. General MacArthur said it this way, and, and, and please forgive the vernacular. General MacArthur said, I'm not trying to die for my country. I'm trying to make some of the food die for theirs. <laughs> Satan's job is to try to kill all of God's soldiers. If you realize that you are in a spiritual war, then every day, all day long, Satan is trying to kill you. Any of you all drove down the street in the last week and somebody swerved over in front of you, you lost focus, you was paying attention to something that you shouldn't have been paying attention to, and then all of a sudden you, you caught yourself. Do you realize Satan was trying to get you then? Have, have you been walking down the steps and, and lost your footing and had to catch the rail? Do you know Satan was trying to keep you then? See, you thought you just lost your step. But that, that tumble was meant to break your neck and kill you on sight. Yes. But God stepped in. The Holy Spirit, which is keeping us, you ought to realize the angels are there walking with you every day, all day long. While Satan is coming, bullets are flying all over the place. Don't misunderstand, the best time to kill somebody is 4th of July. Many people will call the police when they hear gunshot. But on the 4th of July, everybody is shooting cannons, fireworks, guns, so nobody is making phone calls. Listen, I'm telling you Hood Street. When I was in the world, if you wanted to kill somebody, you did it on the 4th of July, or at a time, New Year's Eve, when everybody was firing because nobody is calling the police. Or the police are getting so many calls, they're ignoring them all. There is a strategy. Yes, it is. Man, look at the Bible. Yes, it is. There was a strategy. There was a young man who, whose sister got raped in the Bible. So he went to the village of the people who raped his sister and said, I want to do business with you. But in order for me to do business with you, and I want to give you all of this money, you got to convert to my religion. But if you convert to my religion, all your men have to be circumcised. So they circumcised all the men, and while every man was hurting, they came in and killed them all. It's a strategy. Brothers and sisters, Satan trying to set you up. That little piece of weed, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Drinking at parties and all of that, when people are slipping stuff into your drinks and killing you and raping you and sex trafficking, it ain't worth it. Well, I'm going to let my 16 year old daughter go to a party with all of these dudes. It ain't worth it. Right, that's right. But I want to be their friend. Stop being your children's friends. Right. Your children got friends at school, they got friends for cousins. They got one mama and one daddy. Be their parent and stop being their friend. Amen. That ain't even part of my message. That was free. I ain't going to take no offering for that. I, I love y'all just that much. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's go into the word. Let's go into the word. I, if you will, let's turn your scriptures. We're going to do First Peter. Lord Jesus. Give me one second.
I just, I just received a message. Um, we're talking about spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. Message just came through. I'm, gonna, I'm not telling you who it's from, so nobody knows them anyway. Reverend Adams, I got shot at two times by a man named such and such a couple of days ago, and St. Louis County wouldn't issue a warrant for his arrest. My cousins were in the car with me when the shots were fired. I had to leave St. Louis because of my safety. I'm currently in another city. Pray for me, and please be patient with us. Brothers and sisters, when I tell you this stuff is real, And then sometimes, God, I know that sometimes 
times there are certain foods that we just have to eat, even though we know we don't like it, but it's good for us. I thank you that you give it to us and that sometimes you just got to shut it down our know. Thank you, Lord. I, Lord, I, I'm just grateful that you are the God who sits high and low, yes. Lord. We ask now that we would be silent so that you can speak. We would close off everything else so that our ears can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, as, as we talk about liberty, many of us, we look at this word liberty and it, 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 it makes us feel a certain way. When you think of liberty, you know, I'm free to do what I want. My daughter tells me all the time, I'm not going to tell you which one, it's just my oldest one. I ain't going to call no names. But she tells me all the time, well, Daddy, you know, I'm going to be graduating next year, and then I'm going to be 18. Well, baby, that's, that's fine. You can be 18. Well, then I'm going to go to college. That's good, sweetheart. You can go to college. And then when I'm 21, I'm grown. I said, well, baby, if, if you graduate in the regular time, when you graduate college, you still going to be 21. Well, what that mean? That means you ain't grown if I'm paying for it. Grown mean you out your house. You out my house. You make your own bills. You pay your own bills. That's when you grown. Grown at an age. There's a whole lot of 40-year-old men staying with their mama playing video games. That ain't grown. But many of us look at this word liberty and we think, I have the right to do this. I have the right to do that. Well, just because you have the right don't mean you ought to. Last week we left church service. And it, it used to just be in the city where folks looked at red lights like they were Christmas trees. You know, red light, green light, yellow light, it didn't mean nothing out there. It was just a light. Red light people come flying. They don't bother stopping. They just go home. Well, I thought that was, you know, that was just in the city. But people in the city got cars, and they drive them out here. And everybody that left the city, not even in the county. So we were leaving here, and the light turned green, and I'm getting ready to go, and here come a car flying down the airport road like they didn't see that red light. I know they saw it because they sped up. Don't y'all know? Red means stop, green means go, yellow means go real fast. That's the way we act. We started having a conversation in the car, and the conversation was, do you remember when we were growing up and they were teaching us about red light, yellow light, green light? And I, I mentioned, what does green light mean? And somebody said, green light means go. I said, no, green light don't mean go. I was taught in driver's education that green light means you have the right to go. Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, if I'm getting ready to go because I got a green light and I see somebody speeding through and I just decide to go anyway, and they hit me, I'm just as dumb for driving into that green light because, well, I was right. There's a whole lot of dead folks who ride. Just because you have the right to do something, don't mean that you ought to. And just because we have so many freedoms, don't mean that we need to indulge in all of the freedoms that we have. Yes, there is a lot of places that are legalizing marijuana. We just saw a young lady who made history and was getting ready to have the opportunity to represent her nation. But because of a controlled substance, which may or may not have been legal in where she lived or where she was residing, has been discounted from being able to have a life-changing event. Now, I'm not here to say whether or not because of the loss of her mother and her grieving that that's what she chose to do. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm not. Most people who spoke weed at 23, 24, this ain't the first time they have done it. I'm not saying it is, I ain't. But I'm saying, one, don't you know that they look at us harder than anybody? And if they tested horses, yes. there was a horse.
who won the Kentucky Derby. And they discounted the horse for using control of substance. You don't think they're going to look at you? Us? Did y'all hear about the young man who was put in jail from Chicago? They went down to Miami Dade County, Florida. They arrested them on suspicion of carrying the weapon. Kept them in jail for 33 days because that's the longest time they can keep them without charging them. Released them because there was no evidence, but said they refused to take the arrest off of their um, off of their record. The, one of the young men lost his scholarship to college because of it. No proof. No gun, but suspicion, and kept them in jail. Come on now. You, you, yes, I love the liberty of the United States, but it ain't freedom for all. The Bible says, you shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. So as we're talking about this liberty and this freedom, what liberty are we experiencing? Because there is a great illusion of liberty. Come on, man. There is an illusion. Do you all know what an illusion is? A lot of magicians use the illusion. They, they have quick hands. They make you think that something is some kind of way when it's actually different. In the United States, and, and Lord, I don't, I don't want to harp on because it, 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 it sounds like, it seems like you just got a problem with society. No, I just have a problem with untruth. That's right. Let us tell the truth yes. and, and no matter who the truth is for yes. or who the truth is against. Yes. Well, true. Our Constitution says something. Mm -hmm. The Constitution says for all men. And when they say men, they mean women. Mm -hmm. So why is it that all men don't seem like we were created equal? Because God created us all the same, yes. so why don't our country look at us the same? Yes. How is it that an individual can fight for the freedom of the United States, be Hispanic, and then be deported, but not be a citizen? Come on, with it. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. It's an illusion. I make you think that you can do anything you want. Anybody ever heard about those glass ceilings in corporate America? The idea, they say, is a glass ceiling, which means you can see through it. It looks like you can go up, but you can't. You hit it. Right. There's a study right now being done because they said over a billion birds a year are killed because they fly into buildings. Yeah. The buildings have mirrors or windows, and it looks like it's clear, but it's not. Yeah. So the birds are hitting these windows and dying because they break their neck. Flying full steam ahead. Many of us are going full steam ahead. I graduated high school. I graduated college. I have several degrees. I'm going into the workforce and I'm going to make a great living. Come on. There's a whole lot of people with all of those credentials right now that's working minimum wage yeah. because even though they have the right yeah. paper, Come on with it. somebody decided their paper wasn't worth it. There are a lot of men and women who come out of the armed forces and they say that their country is going to stand with them and the Montgomery GI and they come out of service and they have all these skills from the service and cannot find a job. Yeah. Oh, cannot get housing. They can't yeah. even get real health care. Yeah. As, as, as a veteran, I'm supposed to be able to go down to John Hopkins Hospital yeah. and, and, and get the best care. But do you all remember it was right here in St. Louis a few years ago, a man was not seen and committed suicide right in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, this liberty that we talk about so much. But I want you to understand something, that regardless of what man's liberty is, I have a God. Closes the door. All right. If God says, Son, it's time for you to come home, I don't 
But your pastor don't tell you homosexuality is wrong. You see, you're welcome. We welcome to all the other sinners. Stop making homosexuality the one that's, that's, that's the bad one. You know how many lies in this building today? How many fornicators, adulterers, uh, backbiters, rebellious people? Well, I might be a little rebellious, but that ain't bad. You don't think so? The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Just because you ain't got no black pointy hat and you ain't throwing around chicken bones don't make you a witch. Your pastor say Bible study is Tuesday night at 6.30. I want you in Bible study. You ain't got to work. You off work. Ain't nothing wrong. You ain't in the hospital and you ain't dead. You need to be in Bible study. Well, I don't feel like a witch. <laughs> Pastor, you just don't went too far. It ain't me. I'm going to tell you what the word of God says. You do what you want. I'll excuse you. All right. All right. But life ain't mine to give or take. Don't worry about him who can destroy the body. You need to fear the one who can destroy both body and soul. See, many people are trying to appease the pastor. I've got so many text messages on why I can't come to church this week. Okay, sure, no problem. God bless you. Go and be at peace. God, on the other hand, is saying, I got you. Going up to the room, pull your pants down, I'll be up there in a minute. Anybody ever got those open for your mom and tell you, you're going to wait for your woman? I don't want to wait. Just don't give it to me now. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. Just beat me now. Because the two hours you got me waiting, I didn't have a heart attack since then. Two hours to wait for this three minute whooping. You done already did all the damage. I done cried for 45 minutes, fell asleep on the bed crying. Wake up and you still ain't here. Y'all know about that, do you? I will talk about it, but my mom ain't here. Listen, there is an illusion. Satan makes you think that you're free. You know what? I, I was doing a job. My son and I were, 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 was at a job site yesterday, and I was doing a job. And I was, for some reason, my mind went to Satan is trying to make somebody think that God don't exist. And listen to this. Satan don't even care if you don't know that he exists. Because the idea that you would think God don't exist would also make you think that he don't exist. But he don't care. Because he's going to prove to you at the end that he do. When you die on this side and wake up on the other side and look at him and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's going to say, for real, bro. <laughs> Satan don't care if you don't believe in him. The illusion is that I can, you know what? I, I, I got it. God on this shoulder. Anybody remember those, those cartoons? You had the angel on this shoulder. You had the devil on this shoulder. Both of them looked like you. One just had a halo, the other had horns. And then you were in the middle, listening, and decided which way you was going to go. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You were free and emancipated out of slavery. But you still a slave. Let me. Let's see. Where, 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 where is that? Where is that? Go to First Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six. We're going to read verse nineteen and twenty. Now let me ask you this question. How many of you all believe that you are truly a slave? Because see, if, 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 I heard a couple of amens. I heard a mm -hmm, but I, 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 I ain't going to hang on. Do you know, see, us is in here, I thank God we do have uh, some white members. We have some Hispanic members. 
But right now, the people who are actually in the building, we all African American or black, Negro, whatever we are this year. They change our names all the time. Last time I looked, we still had the NAACP, which said we colored people. Now, can't nobody else call us colored, but we still have the NAACP. I'm just saying. We know what it means to be a slave. For us to be a slave says, when master, we didn't have good dishes back then. It was master. It was master. When master said, go and pick cotton, you got up at old dark 30. It didn't matter if you didn't have your biscuits and gravy. It didn't matter if you had your cup of coffee or your latte. You got up and you went and picked cotton. And you got done when they said you was done. It didn't matter if your union rep said they've been working for eight hours. You picked cotton as long as they said. And if you didn't, they would beat you. And then they would take your woman and your children and separate you. Brothers and sisters, that's slavery. I'm trying to make a point because most people don't understand. That's slavery. You don't have rights as a slave. Can we all agree on that? Now, that's the truth as far as slavery was concerned. Do you all believe the word of God? Don't get mad at me. I'm telling you what the Bible says. I wasn't alive when they wrote it. This is not the Holy Alonzo. This is not the word of God according to Jude. This is taken straight from the word of God. Y'all believe it, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. What? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which have of God, and ye are not your own. You was bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body and your spirit belongs to God. Don't you know that you are a slave for Christianity? What does that mean? That means when you work your 12 hour shift and you get off at 6 o'clock in the evening and God says Bible study is at 7, he don't care that you're tired.
because they baptize differently. We are so free that we can have 30 different types of Baptist churches. And every Baptist is mad at the other Baptist. They ask me, what district are you in? Ferguson? No, I mean, what about this district? Well, are you part of the Antioch or are you part? No, I'm just in Ferguson. Well, are you under the National Convention? No, I'm under God's Convention. Why are you asking me all these questions? God says when he comes back, I'm coming back after one church. Word. From the beginning, in the beginning was the Word. 
And the word was God, and the word was with God. So when you see, uh, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says this, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So when you see any one of those, that's Jesus saying, that's me. So now let me say it to you this way. And you shall know Jesus, and Jesus shall make you free. Now that you understand that your freedom comes from the individual who bought it. See, my kids and, and brothers and sisters, if any of my other uh, people are watching this, and, and because it ain't just white folks no more. You used to go to the store and you see the little white kid on the floor crying and screaming, no, 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 no. Well, now we hear that and we go, man, I bet you that's some little white kid in the next hour. And you go over there and you go, oh my God, they have melody. <laughs> they skin is dark. When did we start letting our kids yell and scream and talk back and yell and all? We grew up on yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. Stand right here, you bet not lose. When you went to the grocery store, When you walk out of there, you better be right next to me. I don't have to call you. Because I know where you're at. I'm not putting a leash on my kids. All right. All right. When you come to my house, it's my house. You ain't slamming no door in my house. Don't lock no doors in my house. There is no freedom for you. I don't care nothing about your friends. I don't care what your friends do. I don't care where they go. You ain't going. Why? Because I own you. God gave you to me to manage until I turned you back over to him. So here, here Jesus is saying, I am the way. I'm the truth. I am the life. All your life is in me. And believe me, there are some things I'm going to tell you that you shouldn't do. But it's only for your own good. Satan is going to tell you, you can jump off that building, you can fly. Keep smoking that stuff. Go ahead and shoot up. You can jump off this building. I believe I can fly. Yeah. You might not believe in gravity, but it's going to believe you. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, listen, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to make it as plain as I possibly can. Let's keep reading. Jesus answered, this is verse 34. Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Oh, so, so you are awesome. If you ain't serving God, you serve the Satan. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. You are either going to serve God or you're going to serve Satan. Jesus said, Whoever so, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son shall make you free, then you are free indeed. And here Jesus says in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, But even the son of man did not come to me, sir. He came to serve. When it's all said and done, your job is to come and serve us. Yes, you are free, but free to serve. Do you know how many times over this last year and during this time of the election, I had other people who were telling me, but I don't feel that way. I don't really care how you feel. Because you're not the one being oppressed. I feel a certain way. You mean to tell me that the Bible that you read didn't tell you that when those who mourn, you should mourn with them? When those rejoice, rejoice with them? You still worry about how you feel and what you're telling me I should like, I'm the one who got beat. I'm the one who couldn't get a job when you didn't even have a degree. You didn't have a high school diploma, but your daddy had a friend who had a business and now you manage it. But I got three degrees and I'm working for you, and you telling me I shouldn't feel some kind of way? I'm sorry, I got PTSD. I just went all back into, into something. We came here as Christians 
Why? Not so that, brothers and sisters, I'm not the pastor so that I can have 15 people walking behind me carrying my briefcase and my water and all of that. Those who are the greatest among you should be the, the least. And those who are the least should be the greatest. Jesus said, I came to serve you. Do you all remember at the Last Supper when Jesus said, okay, you all take off your sandals. I'm going to wash your feet. And the disciples said, no, no, no. Master, Master. Come on now. Peter said, you can't wash my feet. That's what he said. I'm beneath you. He said, son, if I don't wash your feet, I don't have nothing to do with you. Peter said, well, Lord, Lord, be it for me. Don't just wash my feet, but wash me all over. Jesus said, even though I'm the master, even though I am the son of the king, even though I'm equal to the king, I came to serve you as your pastor, as men and women of the gospel. We need to stop this thing where we got people coming to serve us. That's not the job. The job is for me to serve you. I'm here to feed you. I love you. Infected. 
and it protects the skin and the under part of your body. You don't see it, but it's real important. Do you know that sometimes there are demons that's walking in this church? I need some white blood cells who can look and say, you ain't supposed to be in here. I don't need y'all to go and start fighting the people, though. Don't get me wrong, man. What I told you to do. So we doing it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> That's, that's the inside story, y'all. Don't, don't be looking over there. I look over there. Y'all know who's sitting over there. Don't turn the camera over there. Um, but at the white blood cell of, of the church, when that spirit comes in, your spirit ought to go on alert. You need to start praying. Father God, I, I, I feel something in here. There's a spirit of oppression. There's a spirit of depression. There's a spirit of suicide. I'm, I'm rebuked that in the name of Jesus. Don't get up in the middle of my sermon and start speaking in tongues and hollering and fussing. Lord, I ain't got any name of Jesus. Sit down, shut up. You can pray right where you are and rebuke that spirit and, 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 and we can intercede. But you are important. You're serving the body. Now, many of us, this is my last point, many of us will come to church and serve. But I don't need us to serve in here. Look around. It's, it's, it's almost empty. And it ain't just almost empty because of Corona. Do you all remember when they used to have the Annie, the Annie Malone parades? Annie Malone was always on Sunday. Why did they always have Annie Malone on Sunday? Why couldn't they have Annie Malone on Saturday? We'll find any excuse not to come to church. People will go anywhere but church. They'll wash their cars. They'll go to the park. Well, this is the one day God said rest. Actually, the Sabbath is on a Saturday. Just to let you know, for those who don't know. No, that don't mean you need to go and join the Seventh-day Adventists. They worship on Saturday. It don't matter what day you worship. The Bible says you ought to have one day of rest. If you all should be resting on Sunday, so should I. I'm going to come in and I'm going to sit down with you. This is work. In order to get all these scriptures, to, to take the six years to go through school and, and learn all this stuff and bring it to you, it's work. What's my day of rest? Whatever day I would say I'm going to rest, I'm going to tell you don't call me. Let's see how that works. <laughs> I get calls and text messages. I'm, I'm, I'm messaging, or people are messaging me who ain't even members. And I'm saying, why are you talking to me? The one thing that used to irritate me the most with my parents when they were pastors was, you'll come to my church, use up my mama and my daddy, and make them pray for you and fast and all. You know when they fast and we don't get to eat right? <laughs> When they fast, we get bologna sandwiches and salami sandwiches because they didn't cook the greens and the beans and, and the steak and all that. So they fast, so they didn't cook. So it was go fend for yourself. But when they say, "Are you going to come and join this ministry?" No, we need to go to the big church so that we can feel good about ourselves. But why didn't you go to the big church and ask that big pastor to pray for you? There's a whole lot of people. Who call in your past and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm just being honest. I tell them, I'll pray for you, but I'm not going to spend all my day and then time. I can feed you if you come to my restaurant. <laughs> Don't go to Burger King asking for a lobster tail. If you come to Jerusalem, then you are under my covering. But if you want to be at somebody else's church and then call me and ask me what the Bible says about this, I'm <laughs> what did your pastor tell you that he said? Well, I can't call my pastor. Click. What you calling me for that? I can say all this because bitch and mother out of town. I'm going to see them tomorrow, but I know for right now they're not here. They're going to probably call me on the same schedule, son. Listen, the doors of the church are open. God bless you. Remember, uh, your freedom, don't take it for granted as well. And don't overestimate your freedom. You are free. 
But God says, use that liberty or that freedom to serve. I don't know, uh, sisters, I don't know if you all have a church home. If you do, I'm so grateful that, that, that you took the time out from your church home to come and worship with us. But there are some people who don't have a church home. If you don't have a church home and you're looking for a place to worship and to serve where you're going to be fed the word of God, where you are going to be loved on because your pastor has to love you and you need to have access to your pastor. I, brothers and sisters, I listen to some of the greatest ministries that are here, that are in our nation. But I can, even as a pastor, I just can't get on the phone and call T.E. Jakes. And I'm not saying that he don't want to talk to me. But that man got 25,000 members. If he just gave five minutes to each of them, he done already ran out the run. He ain't got no time for himself. There's only, a, there's only a certain amount of people that you can truly pastor. Come on now. I don't know what that number is. I do know I ain't there yet. Although, sometimes these 75 people that we got Make you want to take vacation every week. <laughs> There's four or five that just take your whole week. <laughs> but your pastor, your pastor wants to love on you. And you need to have access to them. Now that Lord, I don't want to go to love. Them. Don't call your pastor because you got a headache. The Bible says that if there's any sick among them, let them call the other church. But do you know that you can pray for yourself? That's right. The problem is some of y'all don't know how to pray, which is why we have Bible study. Amen. You don't know that the same God I serve, you serve. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Do you know when Jesus died, the Bible says the veil that separated the holy priest from everybody else was torn in half so that you had access right. to God. You have the same access that I have. God just says, I give you, Alonzo, a word for them to feed them so that they are strong enough to be able to work. And when you work, you should know who your boss is. My managers always said, we have an open door policy. When we open up the doors of the church, this is a symbolism. Jesus says, behold, I stand and knock. I'm knocking. And I'm waiting for you to open up the door. But let me ask you this question. How many of you all know God shouldn't have to knock at his own door? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I'm knocking. But there's something wrong when I go to my house and I got to knock in order to get in. I don't have the key to my house. I don't have the code. I don't have the authorization to just walk in. God says, I've given you the liberty. I've given you the freedom to reject me. But remember, if you reject me, I will reject you. God bless you. God keep you. If you all need anything that the church can do to help you in your daily walk, let us know. Call us. Give us a message so that we can love on you and support you while you support the body of Christ. God bless you. Let us stand.